right, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Heavenly Father, just uh, lift up this sermon and bless us as we hear your words. In Jesus' precious name, amen. 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 So what a, what a Sunday we had last week. Um, and it's been a battle since. <laughs> so I thought I'd talk about baptism a little bit more today. Uh, some, some things here. So afterwards, as the next morning when we get up after the baptism, somehow a quarter of the water in the pool got removed. And basically someone had to lean on the pool like this to get the water to come out. That the water came out of my pool so fast that it flushed the cinder blocks out into my yard. So they had to stand there and hold the pool down in order for the water to get out. And no one did it, but it's just, it's been done. So then we go to fill it up, and the well went dry. Right, so uh, we got here this morning, and the computers didn't work. One of them went down, thank God for Ben to play with them, and the Holy Spirit fired them back up. They're working, they'll probably die afterwards, but right now they're running. Uh, continuous attack when you reach out to do work for Jesus. You know, some, uh, some people think I come to Christ and my life is just going to be luxurious. I accepted Jesus. He's my Savior and I'm going to do all the good works that he wants me to do. But you may be waking up to a different day. <laughs> so we're going to start with the uh, book of Matthew, chapter 3. Verse 1, in those days John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah. In Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 3 through 5, is saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord make his path straight. So here he is, this guy decides to go out in the woods, he feels that the Holy Spirit has spoke to him, God has spoke to him, and he's going to go out and he's going to start baptizing people. Nobody even understands what baptism is at this point in time, but this guy's going to go and do it. Now, he could have done anything in life, but this is what he's decided to do. And of course, people think he's right out of his mind. He's dressed in animal furs, and he's got this belt around his waist, and he's eating honey and locusts, and that's all he does. He could have gone anyplace else and done anything else, but this is what he's decided to do. He decided to follow what he believed was his calling in life, right? And that was to go fulfill what he needed to do. He needed to tell people that Christ was coming. They didn't understand standing up for Christ. Death coming under the water. Resurrection afterwards. They didn't understand that. They had no knowledge of that. So why even do this? They think this is going to get them into heaven. And then there was a crew of people that thought just because of their lineage, they would get into heaven. But none of that's true either. Now John himself was clothed in camel's hair and with a leather belt around his waist. Right? Belt around the waist. Wait, what's, what's the arm of God? Belt around your waist is truth. And his food was locust and wild honey. Then Jerusalem, all Judea, and all the region around the Jordan went out to him and were baptized by him in the Jordan, confessing their sins. They were repenting. They were saying, hey, this is what I was doing wrong. I'm going to stop. Right? That's what he's doing. He's He's got people coming and they're saying, we're going to do this. But they think they're doing it in the name of John. They don't understand what's going on here. And John keeps telling them, I'm not the one. He's coming. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, brood of vapors, who warned you to flee from the wrath of come? Therefore, bear fruits worthy of repentance and do not think to say to yourselves we have Abraham as our father for I say to you that God is able to raise up children to Abraham for these from these stones he can make these stones in the people right if God wanted to he said this could be my new lineage it's going to come from the stones it doesn't have to be these people think that they they're just in 
right? So they don't even have to repent because they're not sinning. And what's their fruits, right? It's funny that it's fruits in here. People look for fruits in people. What's a fruit in a person? So many people argue about what fruits are, right? Fruits, pretty much, is just relinquishing your sin and not following it anymore. <laughs> That's an awesome fruit. I'm not going to do that sin anymore. I'm not going to swear. What a sin to give up. I'm not going to swear anymore. You know, we had a, I had a young woman back in, in Saugus that uh, she was going to give her testimony. And it had to be within a five-minute thing. you got five minutes to give you a testimony. She says, I can't tell my testimony in five minutes. So I said to her, take the swears out. <laughs> and she gave this five-minute testimony that knocked the entire building over. She was so incredible, coming out of the streets, getting her children back in her life, all this stuff that, that God just continuously blessed her with, took the vulgarity out, and it changed. It changed her family in, in the way that people listened to her. She could go in front of a judge and go in front of people, and she just spoke clearly and stopped the vulgarity. It was just incredible to watch what just changing one sin in her life created so much. Well, she changed a lot of them, obviously. And even now, the ax is laid to the root of the tree. So the people that think they're in the lineage, they're being cut out too. Therefore, every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So if you don't believe, you don't follow, you don't start changing, you're going to hell. <laughs> I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Right? So now Jesus is going to come into the scene. And fire being, you're going to, those that don't want to believe and don't want to follow that, they're going to get the fiery hell. Right? Those that believe, the righteous people, they're going to make the changes. He's going to bless them with the Holy Spirit. As we know at this point, they didn't know then, they didn't understand this. His winnowing fan in his hand and he will thoroughly clean out his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. So the people that are going to hell ain't going to have a drink of water when they get there. That's what he's talking about. He's going to use his fan. He's going to, he's going to take the chaff. It's going to be blown away. And the wheat's going to be, that's us. The wheat is going to be picked up and brought in. Right? He's... he's being very descriptive here. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John, right? So Jesus came from Galilee to John. Jesus came to John. He didn't make John come to him, right? He's God. He could have made anybody. You just come see me. You just constantly. No wave of that. He went to them, right? To be baptized by him. He goes and gets, he's got to get baptized. He's got to prove how much. He, and again, he's not a baby. If he wanted babies baptized, then they would have baptized him in Jerusalem. They didn't do that then when he was born, right? They did it. He came in and made this decision, free will of his own, to go get baptized at 33. Important fact there. And it is a fact. And John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized by you. You are coming to me. But Jesus answered and said to him, Permit it to be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him. This had to be done. It had to be done by John the Baptist. It had to be at that time. This had to fulfill scripture. When he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, and a lying upon him, right? So the Holy Spirit comes out as a dove and sits on his shoulder, right? This is proof to all the people of who this person is, right? Because we, we got to see things, right? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not believe in your own understanding. But if I don't understand it because now I see the Holy Spirit, oh, that's what it is, right? I have to have an understanding. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in who I'm well pleased. Right? He hasn't done much of anything yet. <laughs> he 
He showed up and got baptized. Those are the only things that's really gone on at this point, right? Here he is. He's gotten baptized. God opens the sky, sends the Holy Spirit down. Chapter 4. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness. No, that's not where I want to go. Wrong one. Sorry. Going to John 3. John 3. John 3, verse 22. After these things, Jesus and his disciples came into the land of Judea. There he remained with them and baptized. So now Jesus is over here baptizing. John the Baptist is over here baptizing. Right? They got two things going on. And guess what? People are going to start complaining. Right? They start complaining. Division starts happening. Division has wiped out more churches. When I first came here and, uh, up in Bristol, they had allowed a another pastor to come in when he felt like it to do Bible studies. Really what he was doing is he was preaching. And as I came in and I became, I, I'm what they would consider the senior pastor here. Even though I'm the only pastor here, I'm the senior pastor, right? So any pastors that come in, any teachings that are done should be done under me. So this person came in and said, you know, that he was already there. So I said, you know, he really needs to start coming in on our services and become part of us to work under me. I don't know what he's preaching. And what he's preaching really wasn't fitting in. And what was happening is the church was starting to split. We had about 50 people. <clears throat> By the time I was able to be the full-time pastor, I think we were down to five. <laughs> because it kept splitting, right? So a lot of people went with this guy. They decided to go with this guy. This is happening here. This is warnings of that, right? This is the beginning warnings of that. Hey. Now, John was baptizing in, I'll never say that name, Anona, near Salam, because there was much water there. And they came and were baptized. For John had not been thrown into prison yet. Then there arose a dispute between of some John's disciples and the Jews about purification. And they came to John and said to him, Rabbi, right, see now he's rabbi. What does rabbi mean? Say his pastor, teacher, right? He who was with you beyond the Jordan to whom you have testified, behold, he is baptizing all are coming to him. So more are going to him than this name with John. And they're supposed to, right? John answered and said, A man can receive nothing unless it has been given to him from heaven. You yourselves bear me witness that I said, I am not the Christ, but I have been sent before him. Right? He's sent before him. He's supposed to go tell the world he's coming. He who has the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him, rejoicing greatly because of the bridegroom's voice, Therefore, this joy of mine is fulfilled. He's full of joy. He's just so grateful that he's been able to, what he was doing out in the wilderness, bear fruit. Christ came. Christ was baptized. Now Christ is moving on, and everybody needs to go follow him. He must increase, but I must decrease, right? John the Baptist has to fall away as Christ takes charge of the ministry. John did his part. That's what he was supposed to do. He who comes from above is above all. He who is from the earthly and speaks of the earth. He who comes from heaven is above all. That's Christ. Proof. He fulfilled Old Testament scripture. And what has been said and heard that he testifies and no one receives his testimony. People aren't believing him. He who has received his testimony has certified that God is true, right? That's how we start following God. We believe that Jesus Christ is true, right? What did he have? What did John the Baptist have on him? He had the belt of truth. For him, for he who him God has sent speaks the words of God.
But God does not give the Spirit by measure. So when we get the Spirit, it comes out full. It's not little pieces, it's full. The Father loves the Son and has given all things into his hand. God gave it all to Christ. Everything we're doing, every, from the beginning, Christ was involved. He who believes in the Son has everlasting life, right? Extremely important, this one little part right here. There's a couple of words right here. You can stand on these few words, right? He who believes in the Son has everlasting life. You see anything else in there? He who believes in the Son has everlasting life. It doesn't say he, he who believes in the Son and then gets baptized. He who believes in the Son has to go hang on a cross, right? All these things. It has everlasting life. All you have to do is believe in him. That's our constant belief. And he who does not believe the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. Right? Beautiful. I'm set free. All I have to do is believe in Jesus Christ. My life is going to come to fulfillment. Everything that I'm supposed to do. But I have to walk in the walk that Christ wants me to. Right? I have to constantly walk in the walk that Christ wants me to. My flesh wants to go do a whole bunch of other things. Right? I have to repent from that, right? What does repent mean? Turn around and go the other way, right? I want to go to Florida. You should turn around and go to New Hampshire. <laughs> I don't want to live in New Hampshire. I want to live south where it's warm in the winter. Mike just got his bike fixed. He, has his, he hasn't been able to ride his bike for weeks. He's like, Jones, I got to ride, I got to ride. He finally gets to ride. He's going to ride all winter. <laughs> I want to ride. I want to ride all winter. Now, I used to ride all winter when I was a kid, even in the snow. I didn't care, but I'm a little fragile now. I want to walk by the Spirit. Right? Verse 34. For he whom God has sent speaks the words of God. For God does not give the Spirit by measure. Right? He's given me full Spirit. What am I going to do with it? I'm going to argue. Why? Because everybody argues. Right? In the midst of all this, here they were. John the Baptist says, someone greater than me who I can't even carry their sandals is going to show up. He shows up and everybody goes, what are you following him for? <laughs> we can't possibly follow him. The battles I had when I came here, I didn't come here because this was my decision. I believe I came here because God pointed this place out to me it was so wild how I ended up here. I feel so close to this scripture. It's not what I want to do, but it's become what I love to do and hate to do. Right? It's the things that, you know, we constantly, constantly reach out, reach out to people. We, we go to them. We go to them. Anything we can possibly do, and then there's arguments and there's fights over it. It's just... It's sheer insanity, right? What? So John the Baptist did all this, right? So we believe in following this, that our lives are going to be changed so much that my retirement's here, right? It's time to retire. That doesn't mean I'm going to retire from church. It just means I'm going to, I'm going to go ride more. Well, there may be something else in there. Matthew chapter 14. See how this goes for John the Baptist. Matthew chapter 14, verse 1. At the time, Herod the governor, that's what that word means, I'm not going to say it because I can't. <laughs> He's the governor. Heard the report about Jesus and said to his servants, This is John the Baptist. He has risen from the dead, and therefore these powers are at work in him. Now, he's talking about Jesus. What we don't know at this point, don't have the understanding of, is what's going to tell us in the next couple of verses. John the Baptist is already dead. So here's Herod, who had him killed, is saying, Jesus must be John the Baptist reincarnated. He's coming back because the only one that could know this stuff is John the Baptist. Because he missed the part about that Jesus is the mighty one. So in verse 3, 
For Herod had laid hold upon hold of John, the, the Baptist, and bound him, and put him in prison for the sake of Herod's. Herodias, this was his brother's wife, his brother Philip's wife. Because John had said to him, it is not lawful for you to have her, right? So John the Baptist is telling him, this ain't right. You shouldn't have this. This is your brother's wife. You're not supposed to be fooling around with her. He left his wife and he's hanging out with her. And although he wanted to put him to death, he feared the multitude because they counted him as a prophet. So they thought that John the Baptist was a prophet. So the, the king couldn't, the governor couldn't say, okay, let's kill him, right? Because then everybody would hate him. So he didn't want to do that. But when Herod's birthday was celebrated, the daughter of Herodias danced before him and pleased Herod, right? So that's, this is the daughter of, so this is his niece dancing in front of him that brings joy to his heart, right? Some sick stuff watching this little girl dance. Therefore, he promised with an oath to give her whatever she might ask, right? So once he says it, he has to fulfill it. He can't deny what he's going to say, right? As, as Christ has said with us, everybody here, we have gone through so much. He's promised us all these things, right? But here's this governor, verse 8. So she, having been promoted, prompted by her mother, give me John the Baptist's head here on a platter, right? Her mother's telling her to say this, give me John the Baptist's head here on a platter. Why? Because they were living in sin and they didn't want him to do that, so they wanted to go get John the Baptist for telling them the truth. For telling them the truth, right? Give me his head. And the king was sorry. Nevertheless, because of the oath and because of those who sat with him, he commanded it to be given to her. He didn't want to be embarrassed in front of his friends that he promised that he would do this. So he's got to do it. So he sent and had John the Baptist's head in prison, beheaded in prison. And his head was brought on a platter and given to the girl, so she brought it into her mother. Then his disciples came and took away the body and buried it and went and told Jesus. Verse 13, when Jesus heard it, he departed from there by boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the multitudes heard it, they followed him on foot from the city. Right? So here it is, John the Baptist, he's done all the things that he's supposed to be doing. Right? He's explained to people that, you know, you need to repent. And then he points out a certain sin that the governor's doing. He's like, you know, you should not be doing that. And because of that, the governor's, you know, and in lust of this girl, decides that he's going to say, okay, I'll let, you, I'll let you take his head off. Jesus hears about it, and he leaves. Right? Why? Why does Jesus just go away? Because John's in heaven. <laughs> it don't matter. Next move. All these things have to fall in place in order for the proof of Jesus Christ in life. John just is Jesus is just like, okay, next. I have to go to the next position, right? So they, he's off on his way. Now John the Baptist, his disciples get him, they get the body, and they go bury it. You know, in reality, there's four places that say they have John the Baptist's heads. Today, right? In Damascus, Syria, there's a mosque that has a head, Right? The Church of San Salvertos and Capit Rome, probably saying all these words wrong, right? And I've seen this, I've seen a picture of this one. Is it, they got a, a, a long haired, bearded head in a jar with fluid in it, so it's pickled, and it sits like on the altar. <laughs> right? That's supposed to be John the Baptist. A 13th century cathedral in Emmaus, France, has a head, right? The Resendus Museum in Munich, Germany, has a head. They're all supposed to be John the Baptist. It's like, why would you even do that? Because they worship it, right? 
So many people worship the wrong thing rather than following Jesus Christ. Right? Here, the opportunity is given all of us to follow Christ, go live in the wilderness, you're going to be taken care of, and maybe you're going to die in the process. But your death, because of this, isn't dead. It's eternal life and peace. How much has God given you? He gives you eternal life and peace. Well, that may not be good enough. I want things here to be better. Right? I want things in my life here to be so great that I know that I'm just blessed. I don't think John the Baptist was thinking any different. <laughs> I don't think he was thinking that, you know, I'm going to go to the wilderness and then, guess what? Some girl's going to decide that I should have my head whacked off. <laughs> I could see living in the world we used to live in, right? Drinking, drugging, all the stuff that we used to do, running around the streets, being wild, that at some point, we're probably going to get our head whacked off. But not when I walk in Christ and I follow his ways and I be his disciple for him and spread his word that I think that I'm going to end up in prison because someone spoke about me. And what did I do wrong? Right? Look at the apostles, right? Ending up in prison. For what? Speaking the truth of Jesus Christ. Gone to prison, stripped naked and beaten, stoned in the streets to follow Jesus. Ain't going to be an easy path. You may have to give up some things you don't like. Or give up some things that you do like, rather. Right? There's a way about that Jesus has an understanding that we don't. We think that life is going to be peaches and cream. Well, it's what you do with the mess. The bigger the mess, the bigger the blessing. Depending on what you consider a blessing. What you want to do with your life. Every moment should be about promoting Jesus Christ. Even if it means incarceration and death of the physical body. Even if it means all the people you know are going to walk away. No matter what the results are, that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, and you're going to go promote it. That's our existence. It took us a while to come around to those points, but if I come around to these points as a Christian, that's what I'm supposed to be doing. Seek and save those that are lost. That doesn't mean just the guy living down at the river. They may be closer to God than I am. Obviously, John the Baptist was closer to God than I was. He fulfilled every single thing that he was supposed to fulfill. Why did he go stand in the river and baptize people and ask them to repent? Because he was following the prophecy that he was given that made him a prophet, right? Following prophecy of the Old Testament that someone in the wilderness would be crying. That's what he became. That's what he walked. He walked it, he talked it, he lived it. He didn't let the devil sneak in and change things around. He just continued at any cost. At any cost. So today, again, as I always ask, one simple verse, try and walk it for an entire day. Proverbs 3.5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. Try it for a day, a week, a month, a year. Amen? Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you for your raw examples of life 
that following you is so much greater than anything else that we ever followed. If there's anybody here that hasn't received you, let this be the time, let this be the place. Just repeat after me. Dear Jesus, I know you're the Son of God. Forgive me. Come into my heart and live. I want to know you. With that said, Lord, you know who said that. Touch their hearts. Give them a time of peace like they never, ever had so that they know that they're walking with you, Lord. That we can walk through any storm, no matter what's being done, stoned, stripped naked, incarcerated, whatever you have in, in plan for us, Lord. Lift us up. Bless us up. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. amen.